You know, I couldn't resist this topic even though I told myself no more money videos. Um, first of all, let me give credit. I copied basically the title of this video from Um Sarna One, U M S A R N A One. He's got an interesting channel you might want to check out. There have been a lot of videos on this topic, um, some entire channels devoted to this topic, and I haven't seen any yet that really covered it correctly or covered it fully in my opinion, so it is an important topic and let me just go over it briefly. First of all, a lot of people are speculating as to when an economic crash will occur. I think that short term, no one can say. You know, it may be fun for a lot of people to speculate about all these dire consequences that are going to occur in the immediate future at specific dates, but really I think what's lacking is an understanding of the long-term trends which are driving this and also an understanding of how to adapt to it. In my opinion, there are a number of significant long-term trends which are going to have a negative impact on our economy and these are never discussed in the mainline media and they seem almost unknown to most alternative media outlets as well. So let me go over those. First is peak oil. Now peak oil has been discussed a lot. Our entire economy is bolstered by cheap supplies of energy and that's just starting to change in the last four or five years and you're just starting to see the first impacts of this trend as we head towards peak oil and we start to level off in oil production. It's already had a significant impact and yet this trend is only beginning. So the impacts from this trend are only going to get worse. The next trend which you hear very little about in the mainline media as far as its direct impact on the financial industry is the retirement of the baby boomers. This is going to have a severe impact and it's not really discussed or recognized by many people. The baby boomers have been saving money either through pensions automatically or through their own motivation to save. And all of this money has been pumped into the stock markets and is also going into banks to bolster up the value of the dollar. Once the baby boomers start retiring and pulling that money out of the markets, it's going to have an incredible impact. And again, you're just starting to see the beginning of this trend right now. The same as with peak oil, it's only beginning. When I first recognized this trend and started thinking about it 10 years ago, I decided to look at other countries historically and see just how big an impact it has when a baby boomer generation retires. And what you'll see is that there is almost always a severe recession or depression about 60 years after a major war. In the United States, our biggest war was a civil war. 60 years later, Great Depression. In Europe, there was the Napoleonic Wars. About 60 years later, they had a major depression. Another severe negative economic trend is the collapse of American and European manufacturing and all of that manufacturing being transferred to China and India. This is something that everyone just seems to ignore. Um, short term, it's helping us and short term we all seem to think that oh we can just manage with a service economy but it doesn't work that way and it's amazing how the financial establishment and everyone seems oblivious to the fact that you can't simply import forever and maintain a service economy you ultimately have to produce something and right now we haven't really felt the effects of this because China's pumping all those dollars back into the US economy by buying bonds but that's not going to continue forever. Eventually we're going to feel the effects of this and it's going to be severe. Another severe economic trend which is never really considered is the overall decline of American culture. When you think about it, every country's economy is basically driven by the overall ability and ethics of the people living in those countries. And the overall dedication and ethics of the average American has been declining. Although, you know, I'm still not saying that we're terrible compared to other countries, but we're not what we used to be. And that has a very gradual impact, but it's going to continue to occur in the future. Lastly, there's one threat to our economy which is probably more hidden than any other. And that's the subject that I covered in my video, Oil Money. The dollar is largely supported by the fact that we're able to force Arab countries to sell oil only in dollars. And for years, no one even recognized the significance of this. But gradually, the Arab countries are coming to recognize it and they're coming to try to shift away from dollars. 
We were able to stop Saddam Hussein from doing this by taking over his country. And now that Iran's threatening to do this, we're threatening to bomb Iran. And so we've delayed the opening of the Iranian oil bourse. And we've delayed any significant um, shift that Iran wanted to make uh, towards selling oil in euros. But this trend is out there and it's going to continue if for no other reason that the Arab countries are producing smaller percentages of the overall world oil production. Russia is a larger and larger player in world oil production and we can't force Russia to sell oil in dollars. So this is a very significant trend. It's, it's one of the main things that bolsters up the dollar and we're not going to be able to force other countries to do this the way that we could in the past. Now in the interest of fairness, let me talk about a hidden economic trend which I believe will help the United States and Europe. Whenever there's turmoil in the world, such as what will be created with peak oil, a lot of the less developed countries tend to slide towards gangsterism and towards socialistic policies. And this causes the rich people in those countries to transfer their money to safe havens and sometimes to move entirely. In the 1990s, for example, a big bolster to the U.S. and European economies was the collapse of Russia and the collapse of the Asian currencies. And this caused a great inflow of wealth to the United States and Europe, and it's an unrecognized factor for a lot of the prosperity we enjoyed in the 90s. I'm not just going to make this video, though, to speculate about the exact timing of different stages of a collapse. Um, I don't believe, as I said, that anyone can predict specifically when different stages of a collapse will occur, or even if there will be a one large event or if it'll just be a slow long-term trend. Um, I also don't think it really matters much. The important thing is to understand what's going to happen, understand the large long-term trends that are driving this, and then have some type of a plan to deal with it. So to me the most likely scenarios are a continued erosion of the purchasing power for the average American and for the average European. And I think that eventually, over the next 10 to 20 years, you may see the average American or European having 25% or even 50% less purchasing power. Now, that seems really severe, but when you consider how rich America and Europe are today, it's not as if people are going to be starving in the streets the way that uh, they are in other countries when something like that occurs. So. I think that uh, just considering how to live more frugally will be very helpful for many people. Another important thing to consider is which fields are going to be in demand in the future. In difficult times, economies are geared more towards production and producing value. Um, so I think that there will be a big shakeup in American and European economies in the future. Another critically important thing to consider is how to save money. Some people are saying to put money in the euro. To me this shows kind of a misunderstanding of how our economic system works. All the currencies are basically tied together and when one starts to collapse the central banks basically collude through the Bank of International Settlements and they don't want any one currency to collapse. Uh, that's why in the 90s when it looked like the yen was going to collapse, all the other currencies started inflating. And the euro right now is inflating incredibly in order to stop this huge disparity that you're starting to see with the dollar. So if you move your money to euros, all you're going to do is put it into a different currency that's inflating almost as quickly and also is offering very low interest rates, ridiculously low interest rates, considering the fact that uh, it's inflating so quickly. So it's terrible advice to put your money in euros. I think you have to invest in something that's going to retain value. And if you're a stock speculator or a commodity speculator, you can probably profit off of these trends. But as I've said in other videos, I don't think most people are going to do very well as speculators. So as I've said in other videos, for the average person, saving means owning something of value like land or silver or platinum. I think that the real estate market is clearly in a bit of a bubble right now, and as I've said in other videos, I don't think gold's a particularly ethical investment, but uh, there's plenty that you can do to protect the value of your savings and even profit because so few other people recognize these trends and what's going to occur in the future.